everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Samantha and I'm in client services here at the Retirement Group. I moderate these weekly webinars. In just a moment, we're going to be joined by our advisor, Patrick Ray, who is going to be speaking to Merck employees about whether or not taking a Roth conversion is a good option for you. He's going to be providing some valuable insights that could potentially save you some money. Um, before I bring Patrick out, however, I'd like to just remind you very quickly that although we work very closely with both active and retired members of Merck, we are not affiliated nor endorsed whatsoever by Merck. Uh, the Retirement Group is a completely independent group of financial advisors, so please do keep that in mind. If you stick around after Patrick's presentation, I will be answering or asking him rather some of the questions you may have entered into the Q&A chat throughout his presentation. Please feel free to ask away. It's 100% anonymous and we enjoy getting your questions and we will answer as many as we can. Time permitted, of course, we do like to be respectful of your time and get you out in a timely manner. So with all of those housekeeping items out of the way, I'd like to just introduce you now to our speaker, Patrick Ray. Hi, Patrick. Thank you, Sam, and welcome everyone to our presentation this afternoon. My name is Patrick Ray, and I am one of the senior advisors here with the Retirement Group. And uh, this afternoon, we're going to talk about a, uh, a very important topic related to one of the most tax efficient things you can do from a retirement perspective. But before I get into the meat of what we have to talk about today, just kind of an overview of the Retirement Group in case you hadn't heard of us before. We've got a ton of experience in helping people from Fortune 100 companies transition into a successful retirement. And one of the many tools that we have in an effort to do so is this webinar platform where we bring you up to date or strategic type things that we talk to our uh, prospects and clients about to help them transition the most uh, in the most successful way possible to enjoy a, a happy and successful and smooth transition into and during retirement. And so we have offices across the country and we have an intimate knowledge of most of your 401k plans, your pension plans, how they're designed, how they're set up, what qualifies you, et cetera, as well as your medical plans. And all of that in amongst some of the other things, some of which we'll talk about today, will help you um, be in a position to be as prepared as possible to make one of the most important financial decisions that you ever have to make, which is retirement. And so uh, if you hadn't already taken advantage of our cash flow analysis, I encourage you to do that. Um, I'll give you access to how to get in touch with us in the event that you're open to doing so. But basically, if you spend a few minutes with us, we can spend a few minutes with you and create a document that is a complimentary service of ours to help you uh, create a roadmap for what would be or what would ultimately uh, lead into a successful retirement for you and your family. Um, if you're not already following us on LinkedIn, I encourage you to do that. We have a ton of updates for uh, client uh, and not just client, but um information related to specific uh, companies that the clients may work for that uh, may be very, very attractive and helpful for you in the event that you're open for information and updates and things like that. So follow us on our LinkedIn page if you're not already doing so. So um, as I mentioned today, we're going to talk specifically about the Roth uh, side of the business and the Roth side of how to get the most out of the planning aspect of enjoying tax-free um, you know, growth in your retirement assets, which is uh, clearly favorable to all of us uh, as we speak. And so um, one of the things that uh, is often a quite subtle um, way for you to get some money funneled into the Roth, um, because most of us at this point, especially from a household, uh, make far too much money to um, actually participate because there's income limitations on what you can and can't do from a Roth perspective. But we're going to talk about how to uh, effectively make what is referred to as a non-deductible contribution to an IRA, and then simply convert that into a Roth IRA. And so I'm going to show you a diagram of how that works. We're going to talk a little bit about your uh, strategy within the framework of your 401k. Uh, I'm going to explain to you or show you a diagram that looks uh, kind of similar roadmaps, what that uh, actually entails and looks like in the event that you're able to do so within the framework of your company that you work for. And then we'll talk about the taxation of your um, withdrawals, and then I'll give you an example about uh, uh, a scenario that might make some sense to all of us. So from a Roth perspective, this is kind of a diagram that shows you can see from an income perspective, as I mentioned, many households make far too much money uh, in an effort to actually contribute directly to a Roth IRA. And so a way around that is that you can make a non-deductible contribution to an IRA and then simply use... Uh, a conversion method to convert that into a Roth IRA. And as it turns out, that is not only legal, but it's very effective. And if 
both you and your spouse, for example, if you're married, were able and you actually afforded the time and the effort to do this, and you did this over, uh, let's say, a seven-year window of time, if both of you hypothetically could put in $7,000, that's $14,000 over a household, uh, over a 10-year window of time is $140,000. That's quite a bit of money going into the Roth world where we can start to enjoy uh, tax-free growth from a retirement perspective. And in a perfect world, Many of our clients enjoy the most efficient tax version of their retirement by having pools of money in an IRA, a non-IRA, and in a Roth. And once you get, of course, past the age of 59 and a half, where we really have no caveats from an IRS perspective, you can manipulate which one of these buckets you take money from to help you enjoy the most tax efficient version of what's best for you and your family for retirement. And so this is one of the uh, tools that is often overlooked uh, because there's nothing flashy about this uh, design. There's nothing really uh, intriguing about this other than it's effective. And if you do this consistently uh, for a long window of time, you can um, earmark a nice chunk of money to go into a Roth IRA. Now, from a 401k perspective, there's a conversion strategy that's um, uh, a little more uh, challenging, especially if you work for a company that does not offer you the ability to overfund your 401k. And so most likely you'll know if, uh, if you hadn't already known um, the ability for you to do this within the framework of the company you work for and the retirement plan that they offer you. But for those of you who are eligible, you can make up to a $43,500 um, contribution to your 401k. And I know you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, the IRS only allows me to put in so much. And if you're over 50, you can make a catch-up contribution, et cetera. And yeah, that's that's true. But as I mentioned, the caveat to being able to do this Roth conversion strategy within the framework of your 401k requires your employer to allow you to overfund your actual plan. And so doing so, uh, some people don't know that the IRS allows you to actually put in $66,000 into your 401k. And of course, that would be a combination of both pre-tax and after-tax funds if you choose to do it this way. And the cap on the Roth contributions, of course, correlated to your age is either sixty-five or seventy-five hundred dollars. So instantly, we're able, if you can take advantage of this, to earmark a ton of money to get funneled into or to start the transition of funneling this money into the Roth. And so your eligibility, as I mentioned, your four hundred one k must offer after-tax contributions. They must be able to put in money beyond the $22,500 pre-tax contribution limit as we speak. They must also allow you to have what they call in-service withdrawals, which means you're eligible to take a uh, withdrawal out of your 401k. And of course, if we uh, were involved, we would help you do this so that there's no tax or penalty complications to do this. Basically, your plan has to allow to do this, and it allows you to uh, in, enjoy this particular strategy that we're referring to. And the way uh, the benefit you ultimately end up with is, of course, potentially maximizing your total contributions and what ultimately gets funneled into uh, a combination of what you get in pre-tax and uh, tax-free uh, funds, because the contributions uh, that go into your 401k, uh, if you do them on a pre-tax basis up to that $22,500 limit, of course, is pre-tax monies, which we'll have to pay income tax on eventually when you take that out. But the good news is during this strategy, you're allowed to separate those. And so uh, in a nutshell, this is kind of what it looks like where we make pre-tax and after-tax contributions into the effective same bucket, right? And your uh, employer probably has some kind of match that goes into that uh, scenario. But the second part of this graph shows you kind of the split of where your pre-tax funds go. We add in your employer, in this case, uh, a hypothetical $2,000 contribution from the employer side, where you get this $41,000 of after-tax funds. And the beauty of doing this is this $41,500 of after-tax funds gets a chance to be directly rolled into a Roth IRA. So let me say that again. If you're not aware, if you're able to overfund your 401k and you get this overfunded uh, to the extent where you're past the, um, uh, the pre-tax limits of what you can put into your plan, then this after-tax money can ultimately be, ultimately be moved directly into a Roth IRA. And, that point, and from that point forward, you'll be able to enjoy tax-free growth. And so this, of course, uh, includes a, a ability for a catch-up provision in this example in the event that you're over the age of 50. But that's kind of a... Uh, an overview of the strategy of, we talked about, you know, having a 
a, a conversion or, or a contribution strategy where you put money into a non-deductible regular IRA and then convert it. And then there's also also the 401k uh, side of things where you can use it, assuming that your plan allows you to overfund your plan. And so from a tax perspective, let's talk a little bit about these withdrawals because there's some caveats, right? We got to be past 59 and a half or we're going to be subject to some concerns of when you put the timing of the funds in, if you're using a Roth to take your money out because you can take your actual contributions out, but you can't take the growth out and that money has to be in there for a five-year window of time. And of course, if you get past 59 and a half, that's great, except for if we have pre-tax funds, which many of our folks do, there's mandatory distributions where you get to a certain age and you're required by the IRS to remove monies uh, from that plan to basically start cycling that money through the tax system, given that that money in a pre-tax scenario has never been through the tax, tax system before. So they've made some recent updates with the SECURE Act of the change of the timing of that minimum distribution uh, age, where it used to be 70 and a half, then they moved it to 72. This past year, they moved it to 73 with the intention by 2033, that age will be 75 actually. So if you don't turn 75 before 2033, you're going, to, you're going to be able to postpone your minimum distributions all the way to age 75 unless something changes between now and then. So the real catch, of course, is what happens if you uh, have a family member that suffers an untimely death and getting uh, the ability to remove those monies. And we'll talk about that here uh, towards the end of this uh, presentation today. But uh, on the Roth side, then we've got concerns related to the penalty if you're under 59 and a half. And you also have to have the funds in there for at least five years to enjoy both contributions and tax-free growth to be removed uh, free from any taxation. And so, um, of course, the beauty of the Roth area is there's no mandatory distributions and there's no taxation to our beneficiaries when we pass those funds off uh, to the beneficiaries when we suffer an untimely death. So there are some benefits and drawbacks to both pools of money. And frankly, it's near impossible to have all of one versus another. Um, it's more likely that you're going to have all your money in a pre-tax scenario than having all of your money in a Roth scenario. But there might be a very legitimate strategy between the time of 59 and a half until you get to minimum distribution age at that 73 to 75 year old time frame, depending on how old you are, um, where we can shift a very large amount of money from the IRA status into the Roth IRA status by doing conversions and making that part of what we refer to as a tax efficient retirement. So um, if that all sounds um, Greek to you in a nutshell, uh, we probably wanna talk further so that we can explain to you in detail how that works so that you have a better understanding of the of the caveats in the big picture of the grand scheme of how, uh, uh, how to make a tax efficient retirement. And so uh, I'm gonna show you just this quick example here of if we decided to um, uh, convert a uh, monies from a IRA into a Roth IRA and it's $50,000, right? So if we're assuming that we're in the current tax uh, scenario of 24%, you can see that depending on if you're in the 15 or an estimated 24 or an estimated 30% on the Roth column, of course, all the numbers are the same, but the value of your IRA from a taxation perspective goes down, of course, because we've got to assume taxation, because when you take withdrawals, you're going to pay uh, ordinary income tax on those funds. And so what this shows us is a hypothetical rate of return of making these contributions. And in this case, you've got an IRA plus monies invested in what this looks like versus having money into the Roth side of things. And so um, what this is designed to show us is that Roth conversions are super beneficial uh, if you believe that tax rates will be equal to or higher than where they are today. And so um, even if the tax rates happen to somehow go down, which we're in a pretty historically low tax rate as we speak today anyway, but if that happens to change and go down uh, for whatever reason, it's still pretty logical to assume that it's benefiting us in all kinds of ways if we have money on the Roth platform of some way, shape, or form. And so um, part of the bigger picture and shoveling or getting or transitioning a larger sum of money into the Roth side of things is if your employer allows you this contribution of overfunding your plan. And so, of course, that's a big that plays a big role or a big uh, proponent in, in being able to do so. But here's the uh, end result. In a nutshell, we know that most people over the age of 50 do not have a written financial plan. And we don't really have a reason for that because in today's world, firms like ours, 
are willing and able to do a plan for you for free. And so there's not even an argument you can make for the cost that used to be associated with these plans, where some firms charge between $500 and $2,000, for example, to get a financial plan as detailed as we make them done. But we offer this as a way to introduce our services to you and in hopes that you talk favorably about us, that even if we can't get a chance to do business with you, uh, which is perfectly OK, uh, we get a chance to maybe talk to one of your coworkers or one of your friends that might need some help and maybe we can help them. And so the planning aspect of what we do is imperative. We know most people over the age of 50 don't do it. And so therefore, we feel like we have a, um, a, a great niche to solve in our uh, planning aspect where we can bring to the table a ton of value uh, that you can take advantage of for sure. And so if you're open or interested in either getting some questions answered or talking to us further, you can reach out to us at info at vretirementgroup.com. You can phone us at 800 900 Five eight six seven. You can also take a picture of this QR code to the left and you can schedule some time with us in the event that you're open to scheduling some time with an advisor and we can get you can get on our calendars by taking a picture of this uh, QR code and just picking a time that works for you and your family. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that this LinkedIn page is super valuable in the event that you're not following us on LinkedIn, we encourage you to do that. We have a ton of updates, uh, interest rate updates and economic things and uh, just valuable data that you might want to take advantage of. And so um, with that, I will end with just the big picture. As I mentioned, in a perfect world, we'd have pools of money in both pre-tax, after-tax and tax-free funds. And it allows us the most flexibility from a manipulation perspective as to which pool you get to choose to pick from to supplement your retirement livings and to have it done in the most tax efficient way possible. And so if you're short or light of getting more money into the Roth because you're new to the transition or you're new to some of these things that I've talked about today, uh, reach out and talk to us and we'll talk to you further about how to maximize these things and how they're specifically related to you and your situation. And so um, with that, what I'll do is finish up and pass the presentation back to Sam to see if we have any questions, Sam. Hey, Patrick. Yes, we actually got quite a few good, uh, great questions. I want to make sure that you answer. In the event that Patrick does not get to all questions, please use the link in the chat to book an appointment with either Patrick himself or one of his colleagues after this presentation is over. Uh, okay, Patrick, number one, how has the SECURE Act affected the rules for inherited Roth IRAs? Yeah, so um, this is a good question, right? And there's a little... Um misleading general information that when you inherit funds, of course, you're required to take these mandatory distributions because um, one of the biggest changes in the SECURE Act had been related to how long you get to do that. And so before this new SECURE Act, you were able to take an ordinary IRA, inherit those funds, and stretch those payments out over your life expectancy. So it gives you a chance to take out less money and effectively allow those funds to continue to grow on a tax-deferred basis. On the Roth IRA side, there is no minimum distribution that's correlated to your uh, Roth. So the thing you just want to be most careful of is, is that when you inherit the funds, you got to know when the deposit was made so that that five-year window has expired. And so uh, assuming that the, um, you know, the requirement for your Roth IRAs have been met, which is mean, which meaning that the, the funds have been there for a five-year window of time, there is no issues with you withdrawing the money. The real catch is where there's um, Roth parts to a 401k, because under current rules, you're required to take mandatory distributions from your Roth 401ks, and that's one of the biggest changes. And so um, that's something that's complicated, of course. And so if someone hasn't, uh, if someone suffers an untimely death and they still have money in their 401ks, and there's a mix of both pre-tax and Roth monies, we encourage you to reach out to us and we'll explain to you in detail how that affects you and how the best way to manage that is. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, <clears throat> number two, can Roth IRA beneficiaries delay distributions? Of course, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, basically because there's no RMD to your Roth IRA, if you inherit a Roth, um, um, you can choose to, you know, to push those funds out as long as you'd like. So uh, the beauty of the Roth scenario is the tax-free growth that we get to enjoy. And so I would say that the best thing to do is because it's a case by case basis as to how it applies to you on if and when you should address those particular funds. Um, you know, we would want to do a, a an overview of that person's situation to 
basically understand where they are from a tax perspective and then do our best to uh, advise them uh, accordingly. So, yeah. All righty. Um, let's do two more. Okay. This next one, if the original owner had begun taking RMDs, how does this affect the beneficiary? Yeah, good question. Um, if there is already a status that is met where someone as an account owner is taking an RMD and then those monies pass to uh, a beneficiary, they are also required to take uh, those same RMDs. And so the biggest change uh, would have been that um, if this person wasn't uh, RMD eligible and then passed away, the beneficiary has to enjoy uh, those proceeds under a shorter window of time. They're required to take those monies out of the IRAs within a 10-year window. Whereas if someone is under the RMD rules and they pass away, then they can continue to enjoy those RMD rules for their uh, beneficiary's lifetime. All righty. Okay. Last one. Um, I want to ensure my children receive a tax-free asset. How would that work? Great question. I would tell you first probably to buy some life insurance if that's a real <laughs> um, uh, goal of yours. Uh, but uh, all jokes aside, um, from a tax perspective, you know, all of these pools of monies have different roles in the retirement process, right? If your primary concern is to pass tax-free money on to your beneficiaries, life insurance is the easiest way to do. Um, however, from a pool of money perspective, where we've got money in you know, 401ks, we've got money in the bank accounts and CDs and stuff like that. And hopefully you've got some money in some Roths. Um, their situation will be no different than yours from a tax efficiency perspective, which basically means that when they inherit this money, you know, it's going to depend on if they're working, how much income they're earning, what their requirement for income needs are, how old they are. Um, what their tolerance for risk is as to how the money is invested and to see if that implies the ability to grow Roth monies and take money out of pre-tax funds, for example, that may be set up more conservatively. Uh, boy, there's a lot to, to cover with respect to that particular question. But um, yeah, hopefully that helps. I mean, basically, you need to you need to have someone helping you um, put a plan together that's consistent with those particular scenarios. And then if the monies change hands and get passed to the beneficiaries, then uh, we basically got to start over and do the same thing with those folks. All righty, Patrick, uh, that's all that we have time for today. Do you have any closing statements before we before we go? I do not. Uh, I appreciate your time for sure. And uh, in the event that you haven't done so, uh, reach out to us. We're delighted to help you in any way possible. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we offer the uh, cash flow analysis as a complimentary service uh, to you. So, um, no, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed what we had to talk about. And uh, since we do these things on a regular basis, we'll see you again real soon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Patrick. Take care.